Hello everyone, I'm MC Hammurabi and this is another Clash Royale video. I'm just gonna go over a few of my uh, recent battles here in the Legendary Arena so you can get a better idea how my deck works out and hopefully my connection doesn't fail like it currently is. Well, well it doesn't matter, we'll just start over if that's the case. But anyway, we'll jump right into it. We got a few very interesting battles to watch. The first one we're going to get into will be the Royal Giant. Since a lot of people seem to still be upset with the, ro the Royal Giant, so I'm going to show you how my deck does against it. Now, I'm not going to start off with the most favorable hand. I like to start off with the tank, and as you know, but I, I like to start building a push as soon as possible, or if I have to be on defense in the beginning, start a counter push. So, right now, uh, the best card I felt was the Witch. I could have gone with the Princess. But we're going to go ahead and start with the Witch and see how it goes since we have the P.E.K.K.A. up next. So we're going to get the P.E.K.K.A. out in front of everybody. And now we're just going to hope that we don't get stopped too hard here. Now our opponent is sitting on a full Elixir Bar, which helps us out. Now he does drop some minions, which prompts me to drop the Princess. But I know that this push is going to die pretty quickly. At least that's my expectation. Now when he throws the Miner... I realize I'm going to have a, enough elixir to go ahead and make this push happen. I'm not worried about that miner too much. We go ahead and rage the witch and the hog rider. And as you can see, that quickly we take out the first tower. So again, that rage can turn a weak push into something very strong. Opponent was obviously not ready for that. So he's got his ice wizard marching down. I decide I'm just going to play it safe and build my elixir back up. Because that's an important part of this deck. You've got to just hold back take some damage, get your elixir back up, and start a new push. So right now we're stuck pretty much repeating ourselves. I decide I don't really want to go with a repetitive attack, so I pull out Barbarians instead of the P.E.K.K.A. And right now I'm expecting, now we see the Fireball. So I'm going to go ahead and just let this push die. We're going to get a few shots on this tower, so we're definitely maintaining a lead. Um, his remaining tower has less health than my lowest tower. I get my wizard out to take out his minions, and we're going to go ahead and try to get a new push going. So I go ahead and decide it's okay to drop the P.E.K.K.A. now. Since he threw his fireball, I don't have to worry about any quick damage now. He's got a P.E.K.K.A. and a wizard charging down his lane. He doesn't have a lot of elixir to deal with, and he dropped that royal giant which was a big mistake he's gonna lose everything he tried to stop that with i decided you know what let's go for a three crown i'm not even worried about losing that tower right now let's take out his, his king tower as much as we can so i think he wasn't tracking my elixir too well because he goes ahead and drops a second royal giant i drop barbarians to stop that and now he's got to throw a fireball on top of all that He's just throwing his elixir away is what's going on. So I decided to drop my P.E.K.K.A. Sadly, I didn't drop him on the Barbarian, so my Witch is going to get eaten alive here. But regardless, he's not really in very good shape. I take out all of his Barbarians and those minions. So once again, he's really not doing too well. He gets his Miner down. I tried to drop the Miner in between the Wizard and the Miner, but he didn't do much good there but we go ahead and stop his royal giant from taking out our king tower and there was just no chance for him he was really i could have three crowned him but i didn't i played a little bit too aggressively to pull that off i should have started the push not a big deal i knew i was going to win that battle once we got the second tower so we will go ahead and go on with the next battle this next one is actually a sparky giant now, I know a lot of people have trouble with Sparky Giant. Sadly, we don't get to see a real Sparky Giant push for long in this battle, but at least we can see how my deck does against Sparky. Later on, I will do a Sparky special, but for now, we're just going to go ahead and watch what happens here. Now, this time I have my P.E.K.K.A. A lot of people might not think it's smart to start off with P.E.K.K.A. It does open you up to sneak attacks. But I've come away with a lot of three crown victories, even when people sneak attack me on the opposite side when I start with P.E.K.K.A. So our opponent gives me a cry face. I think he actually thinks he knows what to do with my P.E.K.K.A., especially because he's got Sparky. But I'm not worried about it. A lot of people think that, that they are ready for P.E.K.K.A., but I have a different tactic. So first off here, 
I could have used my rage, but I decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and let this push die. I just really wanted more to see what he's got. And uh, right here I was hoping that my P.E.K.K.A. was going to make it. But right now we did have an Elixir lead, but his Elixir pump is um, closing that gap. So soon he's going to pull ahead of us on his elixir. He thinks he's doing okay since he took out our push and even got a little damage on our tower. So I decided, all right, we're going to force him to counter our barbarians. Never a fun thing to do. I decided to zap his wizard so we can get a couple shots on him. So his wizard is at under half health, although we lost our barbarians. I think that that puts us in a decent position to counter. So he's got the wizard directly behind the giant. I throw down my wizard to take out the, their wizard and start damaging that giant which on the other side helps with the minions fire spirits do get through but as you can see he's not going to finish the job now he drops an elixir collector which i think was a mistake that put him at a, an elixir disadvantage when he's got a big push coming at him so i go ahead and drop my rage this time because i know he can't do what he did the first time around easily take out this tower um and and also the wizard he tries to put on defense so now he's got a lot of damage coming at his king tower and you can see that his king tower has definitely been uh, cut down pretty strongly. Only 1,575 hit points left. He drops fire spirits to draw my, my zap which I foolishly went for and now he finally shows me Sparky. I laugh at him because I know how he's playing. He's throwing a lot of elixir on one side, and sure enough, he also throws a wizard on the one side. I just rage my barbarians because I'm not afraid of anything he has to offer. Now, he could have dropped these fire spirits to help with the barbarians, but I think he thought his minions were going to be enough. Clearly, they weren't, and he gets three crown, th three to nothing on that particular battle against Sparky. So here I played aggressive, but intelligently aggressive, and it came away with the win when we finally when he finally pulled out Sparky. It was too late, and uh, he was hoping that I would panic, but I never panic with Sparky. I'm, I actually get excited. I love playing against Sparky. It's always fun. But I also uh, think I was tracking my win loss ratio against Sparky for a while. Uh, at first, I was about ninety percent, but as I climbed up in the rankings, people were playing him better. So I think I finished with about a seventy five percent win-loss ratio against Sparky. So I look forward to fighting Sparky. I have no fear whatsoever. So this last battle came after a bit of a losing streak. So this one, I think, epitomizes my typical strategy. It, it's not a complete pushover, but it's certainly a, a solid 3-0 victory. Now this is a typical Hog Rider type deck or as much as you can hog rider freeze deck as you can see so once again i feel my best choice is pekka i don't know what he has and i figure once you put a peck on the field it certainly makes the opponent have to think for a bit and they set on a full elixir bar which is certainly nice he's trying to decide what to do because he knows his next card is not going to be worth a heck of a lot so he decides to go hog rider uh, goblins. Now I drop a wizard right on that edge so that he can take out, take them out quickly. Now he has that freeze, which was very timely. He nearly lost his hog rider, but he doesn't get much done. Now that left him completely vulnerable. That surprise attack left him completely vulnerable to losing that tower. We rage up, which and and uh, Peck is all you need to take out a tower. So we've got a lot going on here. Hog rider running in, tons of damage being done. I used the zap to try to get an extra swing. I should have saved it. We would have taken him out. But as you can see, he's not in a very favorable position. I laugh at him because of his surprise attack. I don't I try to be I, I try to be respectful when I play against opponents, but when they do a surprise hog rider attack, I have no pity for the enemy. So he distracts my princess with those minions. She did get a shot off on him, so the minions were only able to get one shot on my tower. My left tower is not doing too well, but again, the opponent is fighting an uphill battle, and it's just a matter of time. I could actually just cycle zap him to death, but I decide that since this guy's being disrespectful, I'm going to take him out in an even more disrespectful fashion. So I'm making him think I'm going to go for a two crown. And, and take out this tower. 
I'm waiting for him to put some kind of defense. He drops the he drops the goblins and the knight. So I go ahead and just rage my my hog rider, and I get him with my own hog rider surprise. That had to be a painful loss, but again. You start off with surprise attacks. This is what you open yourself up for. You open yourself up to a very weak defense against whatever your opponent's throwing at you. And that's where this deck shines. You're always building... Again, the, the, the strategy is always to be building a push or a counter push. So start off with some kind of tank on the field and just believe in it. Get ready to, to create a push with them. Or if necessary, as you can see... We can even defend the lane with that wizard. He decided he saw that P.E.K.K.A. going one way. He was going to go and take the easy lane, but it wasn't so easy with that wizard there. Yes, he got that tower down pretty good, but the wizard made quick work of those goblins and the hog rider, and it was not the easy shot that he thought he was going to have. Plus, he still had to deal with the wizard going up the right lane to help out the, the P.E.K.K.A., and as you can see, the, the results were quite devastating to... Uh, Taba Pua Royale. That's as close I can figure to pronouncing that. So, anyway, as you can see, this deck is still very solid in the Legendary Arena. I won't lie, I do struggle. I do get, well, especially right after the League reset, I do get knocked out of the Legendary a few times. I make it back in, then get knocked out. Um, but, you know, it, it's still a very solid deck. And uh, hopefully it continues to do so. I did just upgrade my wizard to level 8. So we will have some replays showing that wizard uh, very soon. And hopefully the wizard continues to be a strong player in our deck. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. Uh, we'll have some more goodies for you soon. Again, I'm MC Hammurabi, and happy clashing.